Takes a clock about eleven and one half days to tick off one million seconds. One million. And so the bear acquiesced. I mean, after all, he had no other choice. <laughs> But folks, listen, you do have a choice right here, right now, <laughs> on Maths of Open Square Oneathon. Now, you know, this is the only television fundraiser in television fundraising history that doesn't beg for funds. Mm -mm. We just want your pledge to use mathematics. Now, don't try to call. Oops, don't try to write. Just pledge your use of mathematics every day, every night, even on the weekends and the holidays. And we want to know how you use math. Uh, where you use math, when you use math, why you use math, just tell us everything. Let's check in and see how we're doing over at Math Pledge Central. Thanks, Larry, and we're looking good. In our first hour on the air, we received 126 pledges, but look what's happened since. In the second hour, we moved steadily along and we have received 624 pledges. That's almost five times as many, nearly 500%. So keep those math pledges coming. Larry? Beverly, thank you so much. Did you hear that, folks? Nearly five hundred percent. I'm amazed and I'm extremely pleased. Folks, keep pledging your allegiance to mathematics. It means so much to all of us. Excuse me, oh, sir. Yes. Can you tell me how I can get to the Kentucky Derby? Well, certainly the Kentucky Derby is at Churchill Downs, Kentucky. Let's see now. From here, according to this map, I would estimate the distance to be nearly 630 miles south and west. Thank you very much. I got lost in that turn for home. Well, come along, gum legs. Uh, excuse me. This uh, horse is awfully small to be running in the Kentucky Derby. Yes, but you should see him in the short races. I see. Well, good luck to you and good luck to us. I think we have some more pledges coming in right now. Yes, we do indeed. So we're going to check in and see how we're doing at Pledge Central with Arthur. I bet you we got some good news here. Thanks, Larry. We're hanging in there. As you can see, we've already reached 30% of our goal. This pie chart indicates our goal, 100%. We want everyone to pledge to use mathematics. We want to reach 100%. As you can see, we have already received 30% of our goal. That's nearly one third of our hopes and dreams. Keep those pledges coming. Back to you, Larry. Arthur, thank you very much for that most encouraging report. Folks, I gotta tell you, this has been one heck of a day. We have pledges coming in from all around the country. There's a lot of people using math out there. We want you to use math, too. And as Arthur said, we've had great news today. I mean, really great news. Already we've received almost one-third of our goal. This is terrific. So we want you to keep it up, folks, because uh, Maths of Poppin' is poppin'. What can I say? Well, hello there, ma'am. Oh. Welcome to Maths of Poppin'. Hello, I'm just passing through. Oh. <laughs> I'm taking my dog to the vet. Oh. You're taking your dog to the vet? That's right. Uh, but I don't see any dog on your leash. Well, that's why I'm taking him to the vet. He needs his eyes checked. Oh, ciao! Oh. 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 Okay. Oh, boy. I tell you, that dog was a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Listen, folks, keep sending in those math pledges. We're going to meet our quota this year, and we can do it. I know we can do it. Just keep using math. Now, you're not going to wear it out. Believe me, you can use any part of math over and over and over again. Seriously, try it. <laughs> You'll like it. Oh, oh, no. 
now back to the normally scheduled program. One billion. One billion is one thousand million. One million seconds is only about eleven and one half days. But one billion seconds is almost thirty-two years. One billion. This is the Michigan Stadium, the largest college-owned football edifice in the world. On autumn Saturday afternoons, 101,701 fans gather here to cheer on their team. When the stadium is empty and just to keep busy, a lone cheerleader places one ping pong ball in the corner of the end zone. Do you know how many ping pong balls it would take to fill the Michigan Stadium to the top? Yes. It would take about 24 billion ping pong balls to fill the Michigan Stadium. Come on. is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Friday, 9.43 a.m., and it was awards time in New York City. 
Broadway was picking up its Tonys, Off-Broadway was getting its Obies, mystery writers were getting their Edgars, and ventriloquists were picking up their Charlies. We were working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We were locked in a real problem-solving crime that had taken us backstage along the great white way of Broadway's show business. A dear friend, Eve Adams, needed our help. We were willing to give it, but first we needed to look at a few scenes edited for television to get us thinking right. Lauren Bacchanal was a Broadway star. The operative word is was. She had opened in a revival of a musical comedy called Anything Went, but then she disappeared and Eve Adams stepped in for her. To say that Eve was a hit would understate the reviews. She was a smash. But then we found out what actually happened to Lauren Bacchanal. She was kidnapped. Not only was she kidnapped, but the evidence pointed to Eve as a kidnapper. I am going to have to arrest Eve Adams and put her where the sun don't shine. In, In jail? jail? In jail. And that's just what Captain Greco did, even though George and I were sure she hadn't done it. We had received a coded message from Miss Bacchanal, but were having trouble breaking it. But we kept at it. You have to when trying to solve an important prob. George had arranged what he called... This is a combinatoric graphic. By moving these up and down, I can look for letter patterns which make words. And that's what we did, trying to make some sense of the telephoned message code we had received. But there were 12 columns of letters. They can make an awful lot of words. How many combinations can you make from these first two columns? I can follow each of these three letters with any of these three letters. Well, three times three is nine. But you really don't have nine because, look, there are no English words that begin with BK, BJ, CK, or CJ. Through the analysis of letter combinations, we came up with three possibilities and finally came up with a place called Bleak House. It turned out to be a hotel. In a town called Nyack. Nyack? N-Y-A-C-K? Uh-huh. That's where we figured she was, and that's where she was indeed. Logical thinking had triumphed again. We freed her. <laughs> I never thought I'd see freedom again. <coughs> and we were afraid of the same fate for Eve Adams, now convict Eve Adams, about whom Miss Bacchanal said... A treacherous, conniving little vixen who tried to take over my part. <laughs> Eve was here? She was. You said you were blindfolded. I heard her. It was Wednesday afternoon. But when we visited Eve in jail, she said, When was I supposed to have been in Nyack? Last Wednesday afternoon. Fancy that. An alibi. What? Last Wednesday afternoon. I was on stage doing a matinee performance of Anything Went. Remember? I suppose you saw what the morning paper said. Didn't get a chance to look at him. Ooh, we keep a Boy Scout troop alive for weeks with this many old papers, part. They all said Lauren is hammier than ever, but mainly because of us, the show may well run forever. Because of us? We found her and she found newfound fame. You can't mete out justice to only the people you like, Kate. I cannot help but notice, George, that you are tied to a chair. That's right, Kate. I did it myself. All by yourself? My, what a big boy. This is a trick knot, Kate. It's the same kind we found around Lauren. In other words, she could have tied herself to the chair? Uh-huh. The only problem is... I know. Why? Right. We could play What Do We Know? Okay. Shoot. We know Eve has an ironclad alibi. She couldn't have been on stage and in Nyack at the same time. But Lauren was blindfolded, obviously scared. She could very easily have lost track of time. And thought she heard Eve in the afternoon when it was really? The morning. Maybe. But I think we should check it out. I've got to call into the Port Authority, Kate. I asked him to check on whether or not Eve could have gotten up to Nyack and back for a two o'clock curtain last Wednesday on a bus or a train. Thanks, George. 
You believe her too, don't you? I'd like to, but the facts still say otherwise. Who had anything to gain from the kidnapping? The kidnappers, Kate. That's usually the case. Who else? Eve. Obviously. She got her big break. I know. Mapnet, frankly. Oh, yes, thanks for returning my call. She couldn't have made it by train, but there was a bus that could have gotten her up there by 10 a.m. and one that could have gotten her back by 1.30 p.m. Rats. What? Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. She could have made it? Yes. Except Wednesday. The bus doesn't run on Wednesday? It's supposed to run on Wednesday. But the dispatcher said the one last Wednesday broke down in Closter, New Jersey. So it never made it to Nyack that day. Hello, New Jersey Transit. I'm looking for a bus. While George telephoned the bus company, I reviewed a few of our facts. When working out a problem, it's often a good idea to sit back, take a deep breath, and cogitate, perchance to solve. The people on that bus were taken back to New York City, where they were put on the next bus to Nyack at 3 p.m. Right in the middle of Eve's performance. She couldn't have been there, George. Unless she rented a car. She didn't. How do you know? She can't drive. Lots of people in New York can't drive, but they do. <laughs> George, let's go have a chat with Lauren Bacchanal. We questioned Miss Bacchanal again, but she stuck to her story. Clung to it is more appropriate. Then she said, I must leave now. So if you'll excuse me. Excuse the interruption. Lauren. Yes, Joshua, yes. We must do business. We have to deal with scads of unpaid bills. We could do lunch. Fine, fine, fine. Let me put my recorder on first. Hi there. You've reached the star. She's going out to play in the heavens. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Ciao. Ciao. Did you notice something funny? Like? On some telephone answering machines, you can press the record button and leave your outgoing message, and it automatically recycles to the beginning of the tape. Yes, mine's like that. Uh-huh. Lauren's isn't. You have to keep your finger on the button. So? Let's go see our friend Eve. Two masked men. We're all partygoers. Shall we? No, I won't go. Please, stop. You're hurting me. Don't shoot. Don't put that gag in my mouth. Please, help me. Happy birthday, oh. everybody. Happy birthday oh. to you. Why have you played that again, George? Yes, George. What are you up to? How could Lauren Bacchanal have kept the record button depressed while all of that was going on? You're right. She couldn't have. We even heard the door slam. That couldn't have happened. The tape has to be phony. But how did she get Eve to say those things? You know something that just occurred to me? What? Everything I say on this tape is from the show. It is? Yes, but not in that order. Maybe she tape recorded your performance. She wouldn't have had to. What do you mean? During rehearsals, the whole show was taped just to help us learn our lines. Lauren would have had a copy of that tape. And she could have edited it. I'll be gosh darned. George, let's go talk to Captain Greco. Eve, things are starting to look up. Thanks, guys. We filled the captain in on our new facts. He was impressed but not convinced of Eve's innocence. You're still missing one thing, math netters. What? what? Motive. Why would Lauren Bacchanal kidnap herself? What would she have to gain? Good point. Unless she really thought she could collect the ransom. But it wasn't paid. Not all of it, but two million of it was. Yes, but that was her money. Maybe, Maybe it, it was. was. Maybe, Maybe it, it wasn't. wasn't. George, let's go see if we have a friend at Chase Manhattan. 
We got a court order which allowed us to investigate the bank records for the production of Anything Went. We found a couple of surprises. Are you sure there isn't a second account for this production, Ms. Snood? Do you mean if I made a mistake? <laughs> of course not. I am a vice president. Mistakes are not in my job description. I see what you mean, George. The most money that was ever in the account was $2 million. Is that right? Yes. But the show was capitalized at $4 million. Remember? Lauren put in $2 million, and they raised another $2 million from the backers. Where is it? Well, heaven knows I don't have it. <laughs> the other strange thing is, none of the money was spent. It just sat in the account. Until the account was closed, and all $2 million was taken out in one fell swoop. And that was done? Last Monday. Last Monday? Yes, Mr. Frankly. The day that comes between Sunday and Tuesday. Kate, that woman is not only a hammy actress, she's a prophet. She certainly is a prophet, George. She withdrew the money before, before she, she was, was kidnapped. kidnapped. Come on, George. Let's roll. We went back to MathNet headquarters and laid out the story to Captain Greco. He agreed. We had a strong case. Later, we picked up Eve and Benny and started to the theater. On the way, we discussed the case. But why did she fake her own kidnapping? She wanted the show to close. But why would she want the show to close? If a Broadway show closes, all the investors lose the money they invested in it. But... No questions asked. She raised $2 million from backers, put up none of her own. So if the show closed, she would keep whatever was left of the backers' $2 million. And since she paid no bills... It would all be there. Most of it, anyway. She thought the show would be a bomb right from the beginning. But Eve got such good reviews, it looked like the show might make it big. <laughs> Lauren couldn't take the chance of having a hit on her hands. It showed that you had been stowed in some old abode. The seeds had been sowed. And so he was nearly history. You cooked the books and built the backers. I think you've all gone crackers. 
Joe, we've got proof. You made a goof. <laughs> Cause we found out Eve had an alibi. One that we had to rally by. Don't you know? I did your show. The phone tape you, you made. made. The ransom unpaid. unpaid. My neck. Mislaid, kidnapping, charade, the whole escapade is starting into fade, my dear. As you hold on to the bag, on Wednesday Eve was not in my act. Instead, she was doing my act, so I've confessed. You're under arrest. Lauren Bacchanal was tried in Manhattan in and for the city of New York and found guilty of a 155.42 grand larceny in the first degree and a 190.65 scheme to defraud in the first degree and a 13.13 letting the air out of an actor's ego. She was sent to prison where it was reported she was working on a new musical, working title, Time on My Hands. One hundred percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the U.S. Department of Education, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, and by people who contribute to this station and other public television stations.